welcome to The Conscious Investor. Let's get started. Podcast is now three years old. I cannot even believe that Ask Me How I Know turned The Conscious Investor officially celebrated a third birthday. It is extraordinary. And I just want to thank everybody out there for all of your support over the last three years. And I realized that over the past three years, a lot of things have changed and the podcast has changed significantly. I've grown and changed. My experience in investing has grown and changed. And I thought that it'd be really helpful to um, share a little bit about my own investment journey. Most of the time on this podcast, I'm busy interviewing other people or sharing about mindset. And I just thought, I'm going to take a moment um, inspired by, quite frankly, a recent, I guess it's a discussion. I, I went and spoke to one of the eighth grade classes in our local town about real estate investing as a potential career choice. And as I was speaking to them, I realized like, oh, wow, I'm, I don't think my listeners have heard this. And I think I should take a moment and share the story with them. So um, really, I'm going to go back in time, but it's not going to, it's not going to take long, but I think it's going to resonate with a lot of you because I found so much clarity in what I was what I was sharing with them about my journey, about why I was investing, about why I made career changes. And I've made a lot of pivots throughout my life and they've all led to this one path. It's really, really exciting. Some of you who've been listening already know that I was an overachiever. I graduated a five-year college program in four years and started teaching at 22, 22 years old. They gave me a teaching license and put me in charge of an entire classroom of students. And it was split 50-50 between, you know, fluent English speakers and not fluent English speakers. It's absolutely mind-boggling when I think, when I see young adults now, and, and now I'm an old lady, so I just call them kids, right? But I was that kid, and now I realize why the adults, you know, the parents were looking at me when I'd meet them at the back to school night and such like, wow, wait, you're the teacher? Because <laughs> I definitely looked like I was 12 years old when I started teaching, which is hilarious. But one of the reasons, there are a lot of reasons why I went into education. You know, my dad was a residential real estate agent, as was my grandpa, and my mom was an educator. And real estate can really be a roller coaster. If you don't understand it, if you don't, if you don't um, know how to put checks and balances in and things like that, it can really be a roller coaster. Now, my parents were amazing and provided an amazing childhood for us. And as we all know, as adults, kids oftentimes misinterpret things. I know this, my daughter, she'll often say, do we have money for that? Do you know how much money we just spent? You know, as like, she doesn't understand, like, no, it's okay. Like, that's all budgeted. That's all set aside. As a kid, I felt very much like on this roller coaster and probably because I was butting my nose into business that was not mine and I didn't understand it. So that's just a good, there's a gem right there on mindset, just mind your own business, right? <laughs> M-Y-O-B is the acronym for that. Um, so when I went into education, I thought that I was choosing a very financially safe and secure path. I knew I wasn't ever going to have like some big mansion on a teacher salary, but I also knew I was going to um, be, you know, having this contribution into the world. Like I'm going to be influencing these kids. I'm going to have this effect in their lives. And that is a powerful contribution. I really liked that concept. And I loved the fact that, wow, I'm going to be on a salary, so I'll know how much money I'm going to make, and I have a retirement. That's going to be amazing, so I don't have to worry about those later years in life. Well, three years into my teaching, so I was all of 25, through a very hard time in life, including they started handing out pink slips. 
And those pink slips meant you could be laid off. Fortunately, I had just barely enough seniority to avoid the pink slip situation. But some of the teachers that were hired, you know, just like moments after me, basically, they did get a pink slip. Now, fortunately, they did not get laid off, but there was that edge. They could have been laid off. That was a possibility. And it absolutely rattled my world. I thought that working for the government in this type of position, I was just going to like, great. My finances are taken care of. It's going to be great. It's going to be fine. I'm going to live a very comfortable, like a comfortable life, not a lavish life, but I'm going to live a very comfortable life and everything's going to be great. It rocked that to the core. So much so that I left ed education. That's when I left and went into residential real estate sales. When I was in sales, I kicked butt. It was great. I made more money than a teacher knew what to do with. <laughs> it was fantastic, but it also demanded so much more of me. It required a different part of me that I wasn't used to flexing or engaging. I also saw a lot of unethical behavior. And think about this, like teachers really like things to be on the straight and narrow. I happen to be a person that likes things done the right way and and did we say done the right way? Yes, with excellence. Thank you. Um, and so seeing this, you know, some of these unethical things that were taking place just blew my mind. I could not believe it. This is pre-2008. So if anyone of you remembers, if you could fog a mirror, you could, you could get a loan. I can tell you stories about things I know that is like, oh my goodness gracious. I didn't know what to do with the money. I mean, I knew what to do. I saved a ton of money and that helped me out with my investing later on. I saved money, sure. However, I didn't know what to do with this world that I was in. I didn't have any mentors around me. I didn't have people I could turn to that were my, my full on guide. My dad was an extraordinary man. If you know, he's like, he was my true North and an exceptional, um, realtor. But he had some practices that I didn't want to have in my business. I really wanted to create systems and processes and, and to have things where they flowed really smoothly. But I didn't know how to accomplish that. And I didn't understand that the interest, uh, I cannot say the word today, of that world. And so I wasn't able to really create that. Now, there were people that got in at the same time I did, and they figured it out. I simply didn't. I, for whatever reason, it's fine. I'm very comfortable with that. But what I do know is that I didn't like who I was becoming. I didn't like that version of myself. She was just ugly. <laughs> I mean, she had all of this success, but she didn't know what to do with it and how to manage it. And I decided to go back into education. I thought money's great, but there are things I value more than money. And so I went back into education once again, um, only to leave education and go back to it, right? I just have this like really nice hook and loop going on with, um, with public education. But what I was able to accomplish through that is I was able to give myself that permission. And a lot of people hold themselves in a cage like, oh no, I chose this career path. I went to college for this. I have to stay in this path. I am miserable. I don't like it, but I must stay here. And because of my willingness to flex and adapt and my husband's willingness as well, because we were married at this time, um, to flex and adapt, we've been able to make a lot of these pivots. Um, part of that also was we just chose to live on a shoestring and save money. And, and we wanted to build this um, investment portfolio. We thought we would, be, we would build single family houses. Like, okay, we'll just live this little a modest lifestyle, buy nice houses, improve them, rent them, you know, and then find another one. And basically, you know, a variation of house hacking. And we'll just like, by the time we're retired, we're going to have this little arsenal of single family homes. 
once we had children and I was managing one of those from across, you know, a thousand miles away, I just felt the insecurity of that. And I got back into that wrestling with, I thought this was going to be a good process. I thought single family houses would be a really good investment, but this feels very much vulnerable and exposed. If we have and, and maybe we're doing well. I mean, I always had great reserves on them, but it was because I had this fear-based mindset. I was afraid. Let's go back to why I got into education in my early 20s. One of the reasons was fear, fear of money. I was afraid and had this um, dysfunctional relationship with money. And my mindset about money was dysfunctional. So now we fast forward into, we have some real estate assets, I'm managing them, and it just feels vulnerable. Wow, if, if there was anything major that would wipe out the entire income from that property, boom, gone. You need a new roof, boom, gone. Or you're feeding the reserves, but you're still going to pay out this chunk of money and it's going to affect, you know, what you're making, it just started to feel very much like this, there's got to be a better way. <clears throat> I also don't, I mean, we had amazing, amazing residents every single time, the most exceptional people never missed a mortgage, a, a payment, not a mortgage payment, but a, um, a rent payment ever, ever, which is absolutely amazing. And we never had anything terrible happen, but that what if really was unsettling to me. When I found apartment syndication, I was um, bored, <laughs> basically. I was looking for another way. We had decided to sell the, you know, what we had and to wait and invest it in a different way. And that waiting made me complacent. I don't like money sitting in the bank because even you know, a few years ago, money sitting in the bank was still not making money. And so... Um, as I was, my husband said, you know, you go ahead, you figure it out, figure out what you want to invest in, and then let me know. And through listening to Bigger Pockets, we know I have heard Monique Holm and she described apartment syndication, and I was blown away. And from that moment on, I have never deviated. I have poured myself um, a million percent into educating myself, spending money into different programs to educate myself, um, taking time to invest passively ourselves and really aligning myself with this powerful network. Um, and all that to say, it's been exceptional. One of the reasons that I fell in love with this is that business plan. With residential, single family, I just felt very exposed, as I said, and vulnerable. But through the apartment purchases, especially the larger apartment purchases, it's like, it's a business plan. All of this money is allocated. And if we have a vacancy one month, it's already been planned for. And we know when the vacancies are planned to happen. We have checks and systems in place for every single thing. It just made so much sense to me. And I'm so glad that we went down that path. Now, I could get into all the other benefits of um, investing in very large real estate assets, even as a fractional owner, right, as a passive investor. I'm not going to get into those, but I wanted to really just dive into that mindset and that thinking of really identifying what it was that I wanted it through my investment. I used to be anti-stocks. I'm like, I think the stock market is a racket. I got really upset with the stock market because it was always doing something and I didn't understand it. I like to invest in things that I do understand. Now, I've come full circle and now I understand a true investment portfolio is truly diversified. It's not just one single asset class. And my financial planner at the time, he tried to tell me that. He's like, Julie, you know what? Um, you know, you don't want to put all your eggs in one basket is what he told me. Now, if I'm going to put all my eggs anywhere, I'm definitely going to put them into real estate because I have more control over it. I, there is um, more leverage taking place that's predictable and stable. Best of all, though, is that right now, as we are experiencing inflation, 
those of us involved in large scale apartments um, and real estate, we know that rents and inflation, they are tracking in line. And that's what they've traditionally done. And that's what they're doing now. And so I look at it as this money as a bank, right? And it's like, if I go and put my money inside um, the traditional bank down in the, in the town, uh, that money is actually going to be losing money, right? Because there's inflation taking place. It's just sitting there. It's losing. But if I have my money stored in a different bank, in this large apartment complex, that money, I can pull it out. I'm going to get distributions off of that, quarterly distributions more than likely off of that. And now that money is coming into my hands at current market value. How amazing is that? Not only that, the rest of the money is safely just growing or trending with inflation and what is taking place. So many reasons that I love working in this investment space, and I'm so grateful that God showed this to me when he did. Now, it's like frustrating that it didn't happen until I was in my 40s, but all of that life experience really prepared me for where I am now. And I think about even... Um, you know, those people that were doing wrong things, you know, before the 2008 crash and just having such being privy to it and never, never aligning myself and never participating in it, but being, being privy to it. I was actually a whistleblower on one, one occasion because it was wrong. Like, you just can't do that. Um, however, all that to say, that has actually been so helpful as I look at the landscape right now and back before the crash is like real estate was so easy. Anybody could get a real estate license. Anybody could close a deal and flippers. They're making, you know, a profit, even if they made a wrong move, the appreciation covered for their mistakes. And, and it was just easy money and people went into it for that reason right now as I look at the real estate landscape, that's what I see. I see oh, a lot of people are getting into the syndication space because they're kind of thinking like people along the lines of people in the residential space before the crash. That makes me very cautious about who I partner with and who I align with and understanding them as humans first and how they're going to respond when challenges arise is like key, key to my, like, <laughs> to uh, my being is like, who are you and how are you going to respond, you know, because challenges will happen. And if we respond to them appropriately, we're going to work through it and it's going to be okay. But I don't want to align myself with someone that's going to make a misguided decision, even well intended, just because um, of, of the choices that they're going to make just don't want to align myself with that. Um, so I want to just share, you know, that part of my real estate journey, kind of how I got into this, why I love it so much. I want you to do yourself a favor and I want you to stop the hesitating and getting started because money just sitting idly is losing money. And there are lots of really great opportunities out there. So when you're done listening to this or right now, as I'm wrapping up, like scroll down to the bottom of the show notes and click on the link, find a time, hop on this, on my schedule. Well, it'll be a time that works for both of us. And let's talk about your investment goals. There are powerful ways to invest and investing in apartments is going to make a huge difference for your investment portfolio as, you know, we see the world making a lot of changes. So don't miss out. Make sure you go. Make sure you click schedule a time for us to meet. And um, you know what? Most people are like, oh, well, you sound just like you do on the podcast. Oh, you're just, yep. So, you know, what you see, what you see in here is what you're going to get when we're on that phone call. I look forward to talking with you and make sure you scroll down there, schedule that call, and we will talk soon. Till next time, live big, love bigger. What's the big deal about investing in apartments? Why is it better than investing in a slew of single family homes? I've compiled a lot of information on why investing in a multifamily, also known as apartments, will help you reach your investment goals. 
head over to threekeysinvestments.com and download the Why Invest in Multifamily Guide today.